partnership with the Farmington Press and the Daily Journal and Black Knight TV, I am Mark Marbury, reporter for the Farmington Press. And today, as we are winding down the end of the school year for the 2020 graduating class, for those in the future who will see this and not experience or remember it, this has been a very chaotic year. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we have had massive shutdowns of all sectors of society, including the school system since late February and early March. We are now experiencing widespread rioting throughout the country. So far, we have dealt with two major traumatic events, and it is not yet July. Yet in the face of these problems, the Farmington graduating class of 2020 has assembled some stellar achievements. 32 seniors graduated with associate's degrees from Mineral Area College. 16 seniors scored 30 or higher on the composite ACT scores. And during the 2019-2020 school year, the Farmington High School students volunteered for a total of 5,900 hours of community service, with the senior class alone completing almost 2,000 hours of service. This year's valedictorian is Hao Fan, he is the son of Yun Huen and Huang Fan. He has received a full ride scholarship to Harvard University. Tell us what organization and clubs you have been in during high school. I was involved in Varsity Scholar Bowl, math team, speech and debate team, worldwide youth and science and engineering academic team. My events for that organization were chemistry and math. I was also student body secretary of student council, and I also volunteer for Habitat for humanity. In addition, this past summer, I was a teaching assistant for the class called Introductory Chemistry at Mineral Area College under the supervision of Dr. Nathan Culkins. And my responsibilities included cleaning up and setting up labs, creating study guides, and staying after lectures to work with students on problem sets. And then I also even started my own YouTube channel that summer. And I created these chemistry videos in supplement to the lectures given in class to help the students at Mac learn. So let me get this straight. You, as a high school student, were teaching college students out of Mineral College about chemistry. I wouldn't necessarily say that I was teaching them, but I was helping them on ho homework problems and just, I guess, guiding them throughout uh, different chemistry topics and just helping Dr. Calkins in general. Tell us what it takes, the process it took to get through obviously applying, and, and what it takes to earn a full scholarship. I think applying to Harvard was probably one of the most difficult parts of my high school career, just because we don't have a good track record of sending students to Harvard, and so there, aren't, there weren't many people that I could reach out to or resources that I had access to uh, to talk about the college admissions process. And I am a first-generation college student, and, but luckily with the guidance of uh, Dr. Reeves, he's the dual credit liaison here at the high school. He also served as my counselor. He helped me throughout this process. And so I applied to Harvard through the common application. And that application was due around, I think, ju uh, January 1st or January 2nd. And so you have to fill out a lot of parts on the common application. You have to fill out your extracurricular activities, what high school you went to, and then you have to fill out um, you have to write what's called the Common App essay, and that's around 650 words. And then Harvard has, Harvard suggests you to fill out what's called a supplemental essay, but usually whenever they suggest something, that means that you have to do it, right? Um, and I think that part was really challenging because there wasn't a word limit to that, so you can write it in 200 words, 600 or whatever. I wrote mine in 800 words. It was about my experience at Boise State and how it impacted me. And then afterwards, I just click the submit button and I just hope for the best. And then I was waiting to receive an interview from the school and I was actually kind of freaking out because I hadn't heard anything back until I believe, was it late January? It was in March 26th. No, my interview. Your interview yeah. was in January 25th. Yeah, so I hadn't heard back from the school for an interview until like around January 25th. And then I went into my interview in St. Louis, and then I just waited until Harvard released their decisions on March 26. Was that basically like a Zoom interview, or was somebody from Harvard? 
It was an alumni interview, so I went to, I think it was a law firm. It was the Brian Cave, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, obviously, with the isolation of the pandemic mm -hmm. being an issue, have you been to the Harvard campus yet? No, I have yeah. not. I'm actually going to the Harvard campus on July 9th. Um, on July 9th. Yeah. Okay. At Harvard, your plan is to study applied mathematics. Yes. Could you give some detail on that? Explain that. So applied math is probably one of the most common majors at Harvard. And students generally major in that in order to work for Wall Street. I mean, Wall Street, they don't require a specific major. They tell you to major in anything that you want. I think studying math allows you to have a skill set that, oh gosh. Wide spectrum. Yes. Builds across the whole spectrum yes. of what you would be. And let's go ahead and your plan is to be an investment banking analyst. Yes, for Wall Street. Okay, well, let's go ahead and fill that in. So kind of explain what that is to yes. understand the applied mathematics. So investment banking analysts, they essentially just help companies raise capital. They conduct market research. Um, they also perform or they help the transaction of what's called mergers and acquisitions. And that's something that I want to specialize in because I find that extremely interesting. So mergers is essentially whenever two companies merge into one, and acquisitions is whenever one company starts to own another one. And so an example that I can think of at the top of my head is um, Disney, Pixar, and Marvel situation. That was a form of an acquisition, right? So the CEO of Disney owned Pixar, and then they decided to also um, own Marvel, right? So they just essentially just raised revenue. I just find that to be extremely interesting. And so I think the reason why I would really like to study math is that it allows me to gain the problem solving and analytical reasoning skills uh, that are very essential to become a successful investment banking analyst. Uh, in addition, like Wall Street, like I've said, they don't really care what you major in. You can major in underwater basket weaving. They really don't care. As long as you pass the interview that has a lot of finance and technical uh, related questions, which those you can self-study for, and you just pass the behavioral questions in the interview, and I think you should be generally all set. I would assume it at, some, at that point, especially with you more specifically in math, you might be more, I might call it a generalist, where you would work with specialists in any specific given industry or field mm -hmm. in, in a situation like that, I'm assuming. So it's probably why they don't get too concerned about what your major is. Yes, yes. You'd yeah. be specializing in something somewhere anyway. Yes, and I have done a lot of research on it, and a lot of people who have majored in economics and finance, and even though that might be similar to what they're doing on the job, it turns out that they have always stated that the bulk of your learning is on the job itself. And so I think that's why Wall Street employers, they don't really care what you major in because they will help you um, become successful whenever you receive the job offer. That's pretty profound what you said there, in a sense, because back generations ago when I went to college, that's what they taught us is your learning will be at your job. Mm -hmm. You will learn things at college, but your true learning will be at your job anyway. So that was, that was uh, something I don't hear as much as <laughs> I used to out of, out of students. Of course, I'm joined here with you and Wynn, house mother. What do you think about all this? <laughs> you really had a chance to think about all this. <laughs> I know he's a very hard worker. Um, while doing the spring break, he was, instead of like go out and play or enjoying some movies, he was on the Chromebook and then he has to write the essays all day. Yeah. And he's a very hard worker. And I'm really proud of him. Yes. Uh, I'm sure you are. I hope you are. But that's, <laughs> this is pretty much as good as it gets as yes. far as, as going to uh, college and having a career. And I've, I've been kind of fascinated since I've talked to your son a couple of times about his history and then, of course, you and your husband's history uh, coming out of Vietnam. Would you care to elaborate on that as to why you came from Vietnam and how you ended up here? Um, we came here on 1996, 
Um, my dad, he was he served in the army um, before 1975. Uh, and then after the Vietnam War, um, the communists put him in the jail for six years. That's why we came here for the political refugee people. And um, we the first, um, my hometown was in North Carolina in Charlotte. We moved to California after um, 19, 2000, 2000, the year 2000. Then we moved to Missouri. Um, 2008, and then we moved to Farmington again in 2009, and then we have the business in Farmington. What is your business that you have? Uh, we have the nail salon. Nail salon, okay. Yes. Okay. You and your husband both work at the nail yes. salon? Yes. Okay. Yes. So we have second generation of American. <laughs> And you left your homeland because of persecution. Yes. Come to America. And then your son is now going to what may, what may be considered one of the most elite universities, not only in America, but maybe in the world. <laughs> it's quite an impressive story. Is there anything else either would you either of you would like to add to this? I think one of the things that made my application to Harvard probably stand out was the fact that I spent a, more, a majority of my time throughout high school working at my parents' nail salon. And this was something that I talked about in my college interviews. And I talked about how it actually was a privilege to work at my parents' nail salon because having a job taught me to work with people from very different backgrounds, taught me to empathize with them and feel them, you know, and that's something that not many kids my age are able to do to empathize with people or even adults uh, who may not even have jobs. And so this was something that I definitely highlighted in my application. And I think it really demonstrated to admission officers how I would act on campus, the sort of conversations that I might have with my classmates, and just overall my ability to succeed. Um, even though Farmington may not be a nationally ranked school, I think because I was able to balance a part-time job, family responsibilities, extracurricular activities, on top of like a full schedule college classes, it just sort of alludes to, to the idea of college where you will have to manage your time really well, and I think that's probably why uh, the admission officers accepted me. So in a sense, you've also developed a work ethic Yes. Obviously instilled upon you by your parents, mm -hmm. but also understanding business, mm -hmm. which is all too rare anymore in any strata of society, especially small business. So that kind of helped you to gain that knowledge, and it may be something that they rarely see anymore, unfortunately, mm -hmm. in a case like that. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing. Again, no pressure. <laughs> But you're representing Farmington. Yes, and I'm extremely proud. <laughs> we, I, I think I could say for most of us that we're proud of you too. We wish you well and represent Farmington. Show them how it's done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank, both. Thank you both. Thank you.